Good afternoon. This presentation is being done on behalf of VS 2021, which is a Venus Symposium organized by uh, Tony Gasparis and Nikos Lavropoulos that has been a very successful venue for over a decade in improving the care by teaching vascular surgeons and other healthcare professionals detailed information about venous disease, diagnosis, treatment, and therapy. It's a great honor to be part of this program. And it's a uh, uh, indeed, uh, again, this year, although we're doing it virtually, a great pleasure to be with all of you. We begin by talking about what type of compression and when. I have no disclosures relative to this presentation. Now, this is a picture of a patient who had a, a serious tibial plateau fracture uh, with a displacement and had an open reduction internal fixation uh, with the placement of a long plate, the whole length of that leg with 13 screws. Patient was in the hospital for five days and was sent home with the uh, typical ACE bandages. The leg was very swollen as you can see uh, because ACE bandages give way. They don't promote any kind of uh, treatment for swelling, whatever. They just cover up the wound. We see here an example uh, of what happens with uh, inappropriate leg compression and the diagnosis of swelling is made by finger pressure on the tibia. If this swelling is not properly treated, one may expect further complications, including infection, ulceration, or blood clots. Here is another patient. And look at the asymmetry of this leg due to an elastic wrap that was too tight and was, asked, was acting like a rubber band. And notice how the edema didn't go away and notice the ulcer that formed on the top of the foot. Now, all of these patients that I just mentioned to you were successfully treated and the swelling went down. In that first surgical case, the swelling went down over one inch in one day by having the patient be wrapped with good short stretch compression. Here is another patient that had a skin graft and came back into the emergency room uh, with edema and was uh, taken care of properly. We used a short stretch compression, but because otherwise this graph was gonna fail. And, and look at the amount of, of uh, edema there. Yet it is still popular to use ACE bandages. They're cheap, it's the culture, and they're also inefficient. And we feel that the use of elastic bandages, Curlex, Stockinette, TED hose or tube gauze for leg swelling, venous stasis ulcers, or venous insufficiency induced in lymphedema is totally inappropriate and beneath the standard of care. Yet every day in my practice, I would see examples of this. This shows you when we hold a bandage by the same distance apart before stretching it and then stretching it, you can see the difference between the elasticity and the inelasticity of the two types of product. Elastic bandages are the most frequently used leg wrap for a variety of problems. Long stretch design is of little value in controlling the swelling. These bandages fail to produce hemodynamic changes conducive for ulcer healing since the bandage gives way as the swelling increases. This results in poor control of pain and tenderness in the injured leg. Finally, when the bandage can give way no more, it acts like a rubber band. They must be used in extreme cautious Caution when arterial insufficiency is also present because elastic compression produces a high resting pressure, rubber band effect, and a low ambulatory pressure uh, that uh, when the patient walks. It's difficult to wear day and night. Here is a, a, a pressure transducer underneath a, an ACE bandage, and you can see the difference between the pressure when the patient's lying down when the patient stands, when the patient exercises and recovery. The ACE bandages have little effect on increasing pressure during this time. And the static stiffness index, which is the difference between the resting and walking gradient, it should be more than 10. And you can see here at zero. Now let's turn our attention to stockings. And we, we uh, just very briefly, I'm going to touch on uh, two elements of stockings, which are absolutely critical. A good stocking from a bad stocking. How do you tell the difference? 
For one thing, bigger, uh, good stockings, the bigger sizes have a larger calf, ankle, and foot dimensions. Whereas a bad stocking, the bigger sizes are merely longer. And if you look at the uh, uh, surgical stockings that are used in many of the hospitals, the only difference between the normal size and the large size is the length. Here is another product that people don't really understand. It's a very important modality in the right patient. Uh, and this is a flat de net design, which can be of value in certain patients with lymphedema and depending on the configuration of their foot. Now, compression stockings do a little bit better than ACE bandages or elastic wraps. And here you see a typical 20 to 30 millimeter stocking that produces a standing stiffness index of about five. Now let's talk about short stretch compression. Short stretch compression results in a low resting pressure and a high ambulatory pressure. They're comfortable at rest. You just have to wrap them on the leg comfortably. They can be used day and night. Ambulation reduces the swelling and encourages ulcer healing because as the, as the blood tries to leak out of the deep veins to the surface, the, the bandage, which is non-stretch, doesn't allow that to happen. It's like a giraffe doesn't have leg swelling because they have rigid skin. It's the same principle. Pressure under the bandage at rest increases more than 10 millimeters with standing. The standing stiffness index of a good short stretch compression should be 10 millimeters or above. There are many roads to Rome. There are many modalities, including a Nunes boot, short stretch bandages, and even if you will, multi-layer elastic bandages, when they're put one over another, become more like a short stretch compression device. And of course, uh, adjustable compression devices which used to be all Velcro, but there are now more than, there are others that aren't Velcro, are really the, the head of the class as far as short stretch compression goes because they can be managed and adjusted by the patient. This is a typical short stretch bandage that we used in our clinic, uh, putting on uh, three or four layers and then using a Coban overlayer. And here is what happens. Look at the resting pressure, it's 58. But as the patient stands and walks, look at the dramatic increase, uh, doubling. Of this. Look at the static stiffness index of 45 millimeters and the, and the pulsatile flow here um, as the patient walks. And you might say, oh my God, this would be dangerous in patients with arterial insufficiency. Not really. If the resting pressure of the bandage is lower than the perfusion pressure in the leg, then it's safe because these pulsatile increases in pressure produced by the short stretch bandage actually force more blood out of the leg, which decreases the capillary pressure inflow on the arterial side and allows more arterial perfusion of the leg. So they're actually beneficial. And we, we also notice that the rhythmic contractions actually close leaking valves physiologically, which also promotes flow out of the leg. The Velcro or, or uh, adjustable compression devices, as we now like to refer to them, uses, use short stretch material with a low resting pressure and they achieve a high wear, working pressure resort. You've already seen, as the muscles contract, blood is forced out of the leg since the bandage does not give way. And what happens is as the day goes on, the bandages uh, get loose. And so I have patients come back to me and say, oh, these Velcros were great. And, for the first couple of days, but then they started to fall down. Well, what you have to do is readjust the bandage and make them tighter. And as you readjust it, then they become effective again. So it's a nice thing the patient can use. And you can see here some of the indications uh, for various patients. Now here we see uh, that uh, most notably edema with uncontrolled conventional stockings, leg wounds with a treatment with a compression bandage not tolerated. These are all uh, good indications for this. Now here's a typical patient with venous insufficiency induced lymphedema and she'd also had a past DVT and she also has leg superficial ulcers. Note the puffiness on the foot which indicates the lymphedema. This patient was, was actually treated, not this patient, but another patient just like it was treated with short stretch compression with advanced Velcro devices. And this patient who was uh, in incapacitated got back to full-time working and he pushes a supply cart around at the, in the operating room and he's back to full-time work. And the typical Velcro compression device will produce at least a, a standing stiffness index of 15 or 20 millimeters as seen here. So in conclusion, 
One should understand the difference between short and long stretch compression. Avoid elastic bandages as much as possible. Select appropriate candidates for stockings. Many patients cannot apply or remove them and or they are inadequate to control swelling. Employ Velcro devices or, or adjustable compression wraps to those who have failed conventional stockings or had stockings inappropriately prescribed and explore the indications and results using flat knit stockings in selected patients. Thank you very much for your attention and please visit my uh, uh, social media platforms and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.